Hello everybody, welcome to Kerbal Space Program and this is a series of tutorials on how to install modifications. Now there are basically two ways of installing mods, there is obviously a manual way where you copy by hand the files into the relevant directories. There's an automated way and it's called CCAN and that's basically what I'm going to show you right now. So part one will be about CCAN installations or the Comprehensive Kerbal Archiving Network. I'll show you where to get it, I'll show you where to place the file, I'll show you exactly what to do when you run it for the first time. And also how to install mods. It is very, very simple. Very simple. And part two, I'll be showing you how to manually install the same mod. I'm going to pick on the same mod for this tutorial. And basically the mod I've chosen it's probably going to be Thunder Air Corporation's Aerospace Corporation, sorry, life support or T A C L S or TAC L S. Very famous mod. One of the original life support mods. I myself can't play without it. So that's why I'm installing it. So basically what I'm doing here, I'm installing the mods I'm gonna be playing. My playthrough of Cable Space, which will be uploading. It will be in the same playlist as this series of tutorials. So what I thought, normally, I mean, I've got a number of playthroughs in progress right now where I've been asked about installing modifications, especially to the, into the, to the Total War series that I'm doing right now, which is Medieval 2, to the sub-mod called Titanium. Now I've been asked to do a tutorial by a lot of people, actually, on how to actually install Titanium. But unfortunately I've had to apologise to people because I'm sorry I can't actually do that because if I was to do that I'd have to uninstall the game and then reinstall it and that would break my save games and a save game in progress it would ruin my playthrough so I thought well what's the next game that people most likely will want to know how to install mods well that's KSP well I, like, I love playing KSP I've played it for a long time since well before it was released. The very first versions I actually got my hands on. And I have both versions, I have both Steam and the downloaded version that you can get from the squad's website itself. I've got both versions. So I thought, well, a lot of people want me to do tutorials for modding KSP. So I thought, well, while I'm sort of my own install out to play the game I thought I might as well do some videos of myself installing the mods directly I thought it would be the easiest way to do it but I'll do it in retro sort of uninstalling things and show you how to install I'll show you exactly how where to go where exactly where I go to get my mods and how, to, how, I, how I actually install myself be far easier than just doing it as a separate tutorial a separate series of videos so the first part will be CCAN, the second part will be manual, and the third part I want to show how to tweak parts, whether it be stock parts or modded parts, to your own liking. So let's say you want an engine to lift a bit more, oh, you have to clear, let's say you want to clone an engine, you can, it's very easy to do that. Nick, just call it something else, point to the same model. And you can actually tweak the engine to give it a little bit more power, maybe a little bit higher ISP, so you can achieve a slightly better performance on the engine. Obviously, it can be viewed as basically cheating, but if that's what you want to do, who am I to stop you? I might as well show you how to do it. I don't do that myself, but there are certain mods out there, well, especially something called Real Fuels, which if you want to play it on the stock scale, or a bit cheaty because it reduces all of the mass of the parts, including the engines, everything else by half. I think it's about half, I think it's about 50%, something like that. But there are stock alike configs, but the, unfortunately, the stock alike configs for the engines aren't complete for real fuels. There's a lot of mods out there which had engine parts which are not included in the stock alike configs by Raptor. So I'll show you how to tweak a part so it will use real fuels. That will probably be coming up in part three. And in part four, 
I'm going to show you how to add a flag for your own space program. That's also extremely easy to do. Very, very easy. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it, exactly where to go to find the actual file you need within the folder, within the directories itself. That's also very easy. Okay, so part one is for CCAN. And that's coming up right now. Okay, so here we are. This is GitHub. This is basically what you would call, or what is called, a repository for files. And this is the GitHub page for CCAN. As you can see, this is my this is a bug fix release. We're actually in the releases section. And I will put the link in the description directly beneath this video. And I will do that for every video following in this tutorial series. Very easy to find, very easy to download. Also, well, basically, what I was always, I always, I always advise people to do is always come onto GitHub to get the official file itself. Do not, whatever you do, if you find CCAN or any other execution file out there, as you can see from the download link here, it's ccan.exe. Do not get it from anywhere else. You could be downloading malware. Always get it from the official page. And that goes for every mod out there. Don't get it from anywhere else other than Curse Hub. Curse Forge, sorry, not Curse Hub. Curse Forge. Which is the official repository for mods according to Squad, but it's not the biggest one. The biggest one is Space Dock. By far the biggest. There's also the official forums which have links on each of the mods pages in the forums, which is kablespacerogum.com. That's very easy to find. And of course the CCAN. Now CCAN will always point to GitHub or Space Dock. It's either one or the other. I've never known it points anywhere else. Perhaps it has, perhaps I've just missed it, but you know. I've never actually seen it myself. Okay, now the first thing I would say, once you find this page, is click on the issues right here. Just click on the issues and we just take a look down and just see if anyone's actually having problems with the latest version. I've got to list what version it was now. Let's go back. So we have which phase? This is one two two point two. One two two point two and it's a change since then, so it's one point two two point three. So this is point three. So can't update one point two two point three. So what someone is actually saying they're having problems updating from one point two point one two one point two two point two. I'll get it right in a minute. 1.22.2 to 1.22.3. What that actually means is, doesn't mean I'm having problems running it here, as in downloading 1.22.3. They've probably got an older version of CCAN which won't update. Having issues here. This happens a lot. So if you ever have that problem, all you have to do is delete the file out of the root folder, which is where I'm going to show you where to put it once I've downloaded it. We'll download it and then I'll show you where to put it. All you have to do is just click on that, delete the file, download the newest version, replace it, put it as in put the new file back where the old file was before you deleted it, run it again and you've updated. It's simple. It overcomes this problem. I've not actually seen this problem with it updating incorrectly or causing a crash, but I've seen it doing this with certain mods which is a very strange thing it's almost like it gets confused as to where it's supposed to be downloading them from it's very confusing but it is by far the easiest way to install modifications as long as you do it right there and then and don't start tweaking later on as in start playing and then want oh oh that's, that looks nice i'll add that in do it all at once and then just stick with that installation. Don't try if if it's unless it's broken, unless particular mods are causing problems. Don't update it. Freeze your install. There's no need to do anything else. As long as it doesn't break anything, as long as you don't have any problems. If you are, then fortunately, then yes. 
but I'll always say manually update it. Don't let CCAN do it. Because CCAN can actually break your installation if you are playing, let's say, let's say, I've got 1.3 point, whatever. And the previous version I was using 1.2 point, so I was actually playing Riddler's Overhaul, and Riddler's Overhaul didn't, the actual configs themselves didn't actually update to 1.3. I don't think they've even updated yet. They may have done by now, but I don't know. Let's just pre let's just pre suppose you've got an older version and you want to run a newer version and see can as mixed up version numbers of mods. So it'll update automatically its list of mods and then it'll break the installation. It's quite confusing. So what I'd say to people is don't allow get don't allow C can to update its list of mods on your installation automatically. Don't allow it to do that. Don't do it yourself either. Unless you're actually unless you're actually having major problems with a mod, don't update it. It's not worth it. I've had lots and lots of installs now broken by CCAN thinking I need to update and it's actually listed the version that it's for KSP it's for incorrectly as well. So don't trust it. It's okay to install mods through it but I wouldn't sort of trust it to update them not without me first checking to make sure it's okay that's just one warning what C can okay so we've got an issue that's actually pretty simple to overcome C can list crashes on launch C can version 1.22.3 blah 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 that's basically a log file there's no response there it's only 14 hours ago, that's why. Now I have had this happen to me, as I said, with CCAN. But unfortunately, there's no real way around it unless it actually gets fixed by the developers themselves. Most of the times you can just overcome it. Most of the times it can be fixed. Most times it's just a glitch. So, I'll go back to this page. And then we need to click on ccan.exe. So you click on there, and then we ask then your browser. We got depend on which browser you use, whether it's Firefox or Chrome, it will ask you where you want the files to download to. I always download to my external hard drive. Always, I don't like getting my system files sort of crowded by downloads. So I always do it separately. That's so what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so once you have downloaded your copy of CCAN, the execution file itself, you need to locate exactly where you've actually downloaded it to. Depending on what browser you're using, it could download it to its own sort of download section. Firefox does that. So in Firefox, there's usually a, out, a, a download section just here where my mouse pointer is. You can click in there and it will actually sell you exactly where. Don't try running it. Click on it directly. Go to the actual folder itself. If you try clicking on it directly, it is just basically, it's supposed to go into the root folder of KSP. It's supposed to run from there for the first time. Don't try running it from anywhere else. You have to copy and paste it in. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So I know exactly where I've put mine, so I'll go directly to the directory and then change how to copy and paste it through into KSP's root folder. Okay, so once you've found where CCAN has been downloaded to by whichever browser you're actually using, this is what you'll find. It's on, obviously on my external data pod, my H drive. Like I said before, I don't like clutching my system folders with downloads, so I use an external drive, USB drive. So what you do is you click on it, left click, you right click, go all the way down to copy, click on copy, and then locate wherever your KSP installation is. You need the root folder. Now if you're a Steam, if you're a Steam user, that will be in your Steam folder installation, which is usually, usually on your C drive. For some reason, Steam doesn't like installing things anywhere else. If you have the downloadable version from, from 
for squad themselves well it's wherever you've downloaded your installation to KSP when you download it from squad themselves will run anywhere and then you can have as many copies of it as you like you can just copy it and once you call it something obviously the file has to have a unique name compared to all the others but you can have as many versions as you like I've done that a lot I've got versions right back to the pre-release version okay so next up is the actual root folder itself where we're going to paste this file into ksp's root folder so it's coming up now okay so here is one of my well this is 1.3 version of Kerbal space program and this is basically the root folder this is what your folder should look like if you've actually found the correct one as I said I have multiple versions of KSP installed at the same time Going right back, I'm, currently I'm playing through Raiders and Overhaul as best I can and that's on 1.2.2 has not been updated yet for 1.3 but that's irrelevant right now okay so what we need to do now we need to click anywhere left click anywhere away from any icons any folders just here right click go down to paste we want to paste CCAN all the way straight in. Okay, so the next thing to do is not to run CCAN just yet. What we need to do, you may or may not want to do this right now, but I would advise you to get rid of the part database and get rid of the physics database. And if you are to actually sort of select multiple selected items and select multiple items just hold down your left control set the first one so hold down your left control key and select the next one right click you can just tap delete on your keyboard as well but I'll do everything visually and delete now don't worry about those two, those two files they'll be recreated by cable space program every time it runs so you can delete that every single time but it's best if you delete those file those files now before you start installing mods certain mods can alter the physics of the game or tweak the physics firm aerospace is a very good example it all modifies the aerodynamics and the physics real fuse does the same thing as well i won't be using firm and i won't be using real fuse for this installation playthrough that for me is, is left for me as an overhaul and currently like I say 1.2.2 is the latest version of, of Rails and overhaul that's actually compatible and this is 1.3 so we can't use it for this version so next thing to do is to run CCAN you're gonna get a warning like that you may or may not want to sort of untick that I like to keep it just in case I run it by mistake which sometimes I do So first we get a pop-up while well it checks your installation. Okay, so check for updates. Do you want CCAN to automatically check for updates on startup? Now this is the actual program itself, not the list of mods. I would say yes. You want it to check for updates for the program. So we'll say yes. Go on then. Go ahead and you can check for in updates. Obviously we have downloaded the 1.22.3 so this is the latest version. Hopefully it doesn't crash. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, would you like... Okay, this is the second part. This is what I keep saying to people every time they ask me. Would you like CCAN to refresh the mod list every time it is loaded? You can always manually refresh using the button on up top this is the refresh button it's talking about you can manually do that or I would always say no you don't want it to automatically update these because at some point let's say you install a couple of mods and one doesn't like the other so you then you run CCAN to uninstall it and in the meantime it updates this mod list for the newer version of KSP and you haven't got the newer version installed you want to keep playing the older version well if you have the mod list update automatically you can't do that 
if it's updated you have to go on to it's a lot of messing around it's not impossible to do you can click on entry go over over here I will show you exactly how to do that but you go on to it and you can get the older version but it's a bit of messing around so I will always say no don't do that so you can see 1.1 1 1.0 .1. these I wouldn't advise anyone to actually install any of these either even though it says it's compatible I wouldn't trust it so basically what I'm saying is let me just put full screen on so it's easy to look at okay so you've got lots of different mods let's refresh it and refresh the page it can take a few seconds to a minute or two to do this as I was saying I would do a pseudo sort of well pseudo whatever whatever that means I would always do half and half and I would seek an installation for some mods but I wouldn't just seek and to install certain mods that I like to do manually myself obviously the safest way is to do them all manually but let's face it who's got time for that I mean really if you want like in excess of 100 mods who's got time to download every single one of those manually and so most of the mods on this on here are pretty much safe to download and install through CCAN it's just the odd one where well, I wouldn't really trust it okay so now we only want 1.3 so as you can see now at the top of the page we haven't got 1.1 in actually listed anymore so always do that always do a refresh manually don't let it do it automatically say no say yes to the second installation itself updating that's the program itself that's fine but always say no and then click refresh up here before you try using any of them any, before you try using CCAN to install any of these mods here so we've got semi saturated semi there on my teeth in. we have semi saturatable reaction wheels that is realistic not really I mean momentum dumping is actually done on actual real world sort of reaction wheels but they're nowhere near as powerful so that is probably semi sort of realism six school science lab six seat mark three cockpit i'm not going to go through every single mod there's about mm, a couple hundred maybe more there's probably a lot more actually so up here you have filter so this is basically a filter for look we have new sip a lot more than 200 sorry 1755 mods but that's because we've just installed it for the first time they're not technically real mods in compact 1004 so there's a ton of mods here which are not compatible so you always want to go on to compatible which is exactly what you start on so compatible well like I said at the beginning click refresh and make sure you've got the mod list updated don't do that again don't refresh that unless you absolutely need to so oh, well, what we have 1.3.0 installed that is 1.3.9 no idea that's obviously just a way of keeping the mod because it doesn't really break anything it's a standalone and it's by rover dude what a surprise almost free launch clamps alternate resource panel now the basics are as follows in order to install the vast majority of modifications into KSP you have to have a little program called module manager by Sabian without module manager I don't know where KSP modding would be it probably wouldn't exist if it did exist it would nowhere near as easy to install things and get them running so when I go down here on the way down to M and find module manager and it's not listed is it? of course it's listed there we go Yal Dabloth sounds Welsh and Sabian 
So, I'm going to show how to install Module Manager. It's pretty easy. All you do is you tick that. How easy is that? And this is the over here. Is that like what I said before? You've got a link to the Cable Space Program forums page for the mod, and just the GitHub repository as well. So maximum KSP version is 1.3.9. That's just so the mod stays on top. So CCAN isn't going to say, "Oh, that's not compatible and refuse," because it does actually refuse to install mods that are incompatible. So make sure it's not going to get a, a grade entry where it says basically you can't install this. It will always remain, remain listed in the compatible section. If you click on all, which is there, you will see every single mod that has ever been on Seacon. It's actually still listed on Seacon at least. So, GitHub you've already seen, but I'll show you GitHub's page. And we're back on GitHub. And this is the module manager. This is the front page though. This isn't like the last one I did for CCAN. The last web page I showed you. This is the root folder on the website. So you've got commits, branches, which is basically where someone else has come in and branched it off, the fought off the development. You see that a lot for older mods where they've been taken up by someone else. Now you have releases, so we'll click on releases. So we have version 2.8.0, which is the current version. So all we want to do, we want to go back to CCAN and see if that is offering the same version we have here. If it isn't, this is exactly what I mean by CCAN often maybe an older version, it does take a while, certain, certain mods take quite a while to update on Seacan for some reason, I don't know why it's probably because they run off their feet, they're very very busy there's a lot of mods, especially when there's just been a new version of KSP released you can sometimes see Seacan offering files which are older than they should be or not the current version, so that was May 26th 2.8.0 so we'll go back if I can find this seeker. So we'll go back to so 2.8 point not. Now strangely enough, this is listed as 2.8.1. So there's obviously some problem there. Now you may or may not want to take the risk. Because so it's listed incorrectly here. You don't really know can you actually sort of risk doing it? Yes you can actually. I'm going to. So all you do, once you've selected, this goes for any mod here, any mod in the list, you tick it right there, click the left click in the box, you tick and you click apply. Okay, so module manager 2.1, install, new mod install, selected by user. So you do is you go right down here and you click apply. It's all automatically for you. Successfully installed. Fantastic. So there we go. The other mod that I always like to play with is Fire Spitter. So let's go all the way back up the top and see if we can find Fire Spitter. Now Fire Spitter has a DLL associated with it, exactly the same way as Module Manager. A lot of mods use that core. Even when you so even if you don't have Fire Spitter install if you don't want aircraft but it's aircraft parts. If you don't want aircraft parts, a huge amount of aircraft parts, there's a biplane in there, there's all sorts of fun stuff. You will still need Fire Spitter Core. I always advise put the Fire Spitter Core or install the full mod. It's just a big mod though. It's not the biggest mod. I think FASA SSTU trumps this easily. So does Outer Planets mod, which I can't play without. This is nearly 30 megabytes. I'm going to go ahead. Now you can do either one. Now the vast majority of mods that require Fire Spitter will actually tell you. And that's what's good about CCAN. What will happen is if you select a mod, let's say... Um, 
I don't know. Uh, let me see. Which of a mod you select? If it needs another mod, uh, uh, it has, uh, basically has a dependency listed in its installation, CCAM will more often than not tell you that's what you need. You need fire spitter or some other, such as rail fuels. You click on rail fuels and it will tell you. It will recommend mods. Smoke screen is one of them, I believe. There's a number of other mods which do exactly the same thing. Rails move hole obviously is a massive suite which will list all its dependencies and it will download all of those. Right now, I wouldn't recommend you try doing that through CCAM because apparently, that's probably, I believe. And last time I checked, Real Fuels having problems with Rillism Overhaul. It was installed in the wrong version from CCAM because Real Fuels has been updated. So several of the mods now that Realism Overhaul actually depends on. And CCAM will install the wrong version. And it'll cause your system to lock up. Well, actually install or actually loading KSP into memory. So as Fire Spitter, this will take quite a while to install. But I'm going to go ahead. I would recommend if you like playing with plant parts, start off with the fire spitter, and then m sort of modify your play style. If you don't want fire spitter installed at some point, you can install it. But I would always always leave that fire spitter core installed. So I'll go ahead. I'll install fire spitter. It is compatible. Seven point six point not, but exactly like I did before, I'm going to go and check on the GitHub repository, make sure there's no problems. So I always click on issues, I didn't do that with module manager because there's always issues with module manager and it's usually some problem that someone's having some clash with another mod or a minor issue. So I'm going to click on issues on fire spitter though, version 7.6.0 animation problem with module floater module I have no idea what that means. I'm going to pretend I do either. Propeller sounds don't play when you run. It's a minor issue. That's on February the 28th. It's from a, minor, it's from a, a previous version. 7.6.0. May the 29th. I have no idea what that actually means. I'll just take a quick look at that. This is basically what I do when I'm in selecting mods. Animation will not sh animation will not show. It means it basically it means animation. I don't know what it means by a floater module. No context menu button to toggle the animation. There isn't usually, I don't think. Never mind. So propeller sounds don't play. That's an old problem. But Kelvin Space for one point two point nine. Please update to 1.2.9 or 1.3. I've never actually played 1.2.9. I don't. I don't think 1.2.9 actually even exists. I don't think 1.2.9 actually exists. Unless I've missed an update. 1.2.2, the last version I was actually playing. That was really of Obviously, I like I said, I freeze my updates. I don't update unless something actually broke and I don't update. I don't update cable space program, I don't allow it to. So I'll stop it from doing that manually. Okay, so I think it's pretty much safe. So we're the 30 releases. 7.6.0. So we'll go back to CCAM. We'll make sure it's actually downloading 7.6.0 or newer. And we are 7.6.0. So we'll click on apply up here. And there we go, exactly what I said. So you've got Fire Spitter, which is new mod inst installed selected by the user, which is me. Fire Spitter Core, exactly what I said. And Fire Spitter Resources Config. They're two dependencies that Fire Spitter relies on. You will get this popping up fire spitter core at least with a lot of aircraft and a lot of other sp sort of spacecraft parts as well, which use a fire spitter core plugin. So you go down here and you click apply. 
I think that is a perfect example of what I meant by dependencies will just pop up and see can will just say this is what you need this is what this depends on and it will also suggest mods as well I'll show you that as well as soon as this has finished downloading I've got a decent internet connection so you will be waiting like three hours okay so I'm waiting Right, as I said, that's a perfect example of exactly why it's really good to install things through Seeker, at least for the first time. So, like I said, unless you're actually having problems, I wouldn't allow Seeker to install any updates at all. Because certain updates can actually break your save game, even if it doesn't break the game full stop. And that's very important. So, unless you, like, so like I said, unless you're having major problems with a mod, do not allow CCAN to, ins to install any updates unless you actually really check it out. Will you check the form posts out? Make sure no one's having any problems with the current builds, current, current save games. And that's a way to minimise any problems. And obviously, depending on how good your internet connection is, it doesn't really matter how fast your internet connection is because sometimes the servers can be busy. There's a lot of people downloading mods through CCAN. Like I say, it's, it's very, very easy to do. So it's the main way where. I wouldn't say experienced players like myself do it. I don't myself install a lot of mods through CCAN. I do sometimes, but on what I'm actually wanting, what I'm aiming at. But things like really overhaul, I would go and check those files out at least manually myself. Maybe not download them myself manually, but I would go and manually sort of go and take a look and make sure there's no problems that people are actually having. But you only want to install maybe 30, 40, maybe 50, 60 mods. Pretty light install. 60 mods is a light install, believe me. And um, yeah, it's okay to do C can. For the most part, it's okay. For these sort of files, it's perfectly okay. But I do like to sort of go out there and find some of the sort of niche mods. Orbital Decay is one of my favourites, which I wouldn't I wouldn't even attempt. To download or install through CCAN, you have to know exactly how to install it and where to put it. That's if, of course, Orbital Decay has actually been updated for 1.3 because I don't know if it will be. Which is a shame because it's the only mod that's out there that actually does what I would call an immersive, apart from life support mods, a really truly immersive experience, which is basically Orbital Decay. Orbital decay occurs because the atmosphere of the Earth or any planet doesn't just end with a, with a, like a line. It feeds, it filters out. It gets thinner and thinner and thinner the higher you go. Earth's atmosphere, I believe, goes up to about two hundred eighty thousand kilometers, something like that. I think they found actually traces of the Earth's atmosphere in orbit of actually within the orbital path of the Moon. I don't know if that's actually fact or not. Bits of me saying it, but I believe that is basically the last sort of areas we actually get remnants of the Earth's atmosphere. Now that, as you obviously get closer to the Earth's atmosphere, the actual edge of the Earth's atmosphere, the thickest part is where we are right now, obviously, and it gets thinner and thinner the higher, higher, higher you go. But there's also debris in the orbit of the Earth both synthetic as in man-made and also organic dust particles which impact on the, s the leading edge, the, sort of the leading surface of a spacecraft actually causes breaking as well so orbits are not throw them up there and they stay up there forever that isn't true that doesn't happen space is a perfect vacuum it's true there is zero air pressure it doesn't mean it's empty it doesn't mean there's nothing there there's, there's dust, there's gas, there's all sorts. That's basically where you get nebulas from. I've seen a lot of people saying a lot of strange things about space. And the vast majority of it is actually incorrect. The vast majority of it on, on, on YouTube or anywhere else is actually incorrect. If you want to know the facts, go to the actual official pages, websites for the space programs. There's plenty of forms out there with actual real aerospace and space engineers who will answer your questions 
don't believe anything you see on YouTube. Including me. Damn. Well, you can believe me. Obviously, you can believe other people on here, but just be careful. There's a lot of misinformation out there. So, basically, space is a perfect vacuum. And that is why Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had a problem opening the LEMS hatch once they landed on the moon. They couldn't open the hatch because pumping air out, you ought to have something to pump out in the first place. Which is why now they have valves which balance air pressure between one section of the ship, such as when they dock at the ISS, they open the valve slightly and it balances the air pressure. They don't have pumps anymore. So basically what they had to do on the moon, and they put you in a poly 11, they had to actually bend the door back slightly to allow the air to leak out from inside the LEM. Then they could actually open it. That's a snippet of information. Okay, so now we've installed fire spitter. And the fire spitter core. And the fire spitter resources come from that. It's a perfect example. I love that. I'm glad I actually selected fire spitter because it's a perfect example of exactly, exactly what I meant by dependencies being automatically selected. That is why CCAN is such a perfect way for people just starting to play case when you just want to install a few mods. It's perfect for doing that. So, I'm going to take a look and see if Orbital Decay has actually been, and that's another fantastic mod that I've used for a long time and it went missing for a while, went missing in action. And that is obviously by, well, surprise, Linux Guru Gamer, who has taken over God knows how many mods. He is an absolute lifesaver of a lot of mods that I have used in the past and I still use now. GX2 Antenna. Another one by Linux Guru Gamer. He doesn't actually create mods himself, well he has done. But he's really good at taking over and, and maintaining mods for future versions of KSP. So we have keep it straight. Carbonites, I'm gonna go down and find This is the longest part actually, case being logger and we have rescue pod fix. Now that rescue pod fix entry just here, that's really interesting because a lot of times if you if you're running the stock contract system, it will actually ask you to rescue a pod without an actual hatch on it, and it's not even manned. So in order to rescue someone from a pod, it's first of all it's got to be manned. Also, it's got to have a hatch so you can get the people out. So, yeah. We have Magicor. Now, Magicor, by Magicor 13, is what you need to run, get, uh, such as cable construction time, which adds time to, well, exactly what it says on the tin, it adds time to building things, cable construction time. Right now, if you run stock, you can click on build, uh, click on launch, straight from the VAB and go straight to the launch pad. It takes no time at all to put a launch together and to roll it out to the launch pad. That's not very realistic, squad. You need to fix that. Well, never mind. In the meantime, you've always got cable construction time. Which is something I'm not going to look for right now. I'm going to look for my favourite mod at the moment. Which... Uh, nope. There is no orbital decay. Which is a damn shame. Because it is so good. So I'm going to click on all. I'm going to see again if I can find orbital decay. To show you exactly what the web page looks like. Uh, there's a lot of ends and there's a lot of O's and let's go for all of them just like this and there we go orbital decay it's not compatible it's by white cat 106 white cat 106 also does the historical contracts pack and also contract configurator no he doesn't yes he does no he doesn't nightingale does that <laughs> sure you know what you're talking about so it's 1.3 I've been using that in a newer version. 
I've been using Hopeful Decay in 1.2 crikey 1.2.2 with Realism Overhaul and it seems to play very nicely with Realism Overhaul obviously it hasn't been updated but there is a, a GitHub repository so we're going to go on to four, yeah, so 1.3 full version 1.5.0 now there is There is an installer somewhere. I have no idea where I actually managed to get that from. There's a source on GitHub, so we'll go on to there. There is no release for this. So we have source 1.2 X compatibility build. This is a new test.dll. This is that's what I mean by this is what I have to do when I install a mod. I need to go and look and see what the latest version is. So we're going to go back to the forum post. That's provided. So you can keep him as our system. So this is exactly what I mean by going and finding out exactly. I should actually be doing this, I should be doing this for part 2 for manual installs but this is just a little snippet of what I'm talking about there we go so there's always someone who will I found the link in this form for anyone else it is here this is from 1.2.2 so you'll find sometimes the, the community of KSP is incredibly incredibly active there's a lot of talented people who will actually Date the mod where the mod author is actually too busy or has abandoned the mod. I think that School Game is a perfect example of one such individual doing this. Okay, point 1.3. This is what I'm thinking about issues as well. It's really good to be able to sort of look and just take a look and play with on KSP 1.3, Local DK 1.5.4, 1.3 version of GitHub. So there's GitHub. The issue I'm constantly having is that on all my vessels, only five thus far, but it's the LAN parameter, gets set to zero or some value very close to it. Immediately after launch, everything seems fine, early and retains its value as it should. It usually, when I leave the vessel to go to the KSC and check on so basically that appears to be something that's not working in the background now normally hopeful decay does actually work in the background like a lot of mods such as tack ls which is the mod i was supposed to be installing first of all but i just wanted to show an example of fire spitter installing dependencies and I got sidetracked into doing something else. So I'm gonna go and find TAC LS. And we'll install that. You got them all there. So real plume, real well, real plume stock config, which is for stock engines. You have to have a, for everything like real fuels and real plume and things like that, you have to have configs for each engine. And if the configs are missing, then that engine will meant as a stock engine, it will have those new effects. That's the only drawback with using anything like rail fuels and rail plume. I've got real time clock. That's not what I'm looking for though, is it? No. Going to TACLS. It may be under Thunder Aerospace Corporation now. Yeah, you especially use that, you know, because then you can go down. There we go, that's TAC LS. TAC Fuel Balancer. Tack life support. And there's KSB Dash RO. So this is Rails Mobile Group. Who have updated Tack Life Support to run with the latest version, which is 1.3. So you have stock config. So basically this is another example of what I mean by C can be really easy to install stuff because it will it will alert you, it will say this is what it needs, this is a choice, it'll suggest different configs. So this is not two configs. It's got a Rails Mobile and it has stock config as well so we're going to tick on 
Attack rank support. Now, exactly what I said before. Check the attack LS. This is Rails Moveall. Hmm. It's been updated for Twin Rails and Overhaul, but it's also got the stock config there. So, issues. Click on issues. Add resource. That's just a suggestion. We did generalized death. Multiplying kerbals. There's nothing really that I would say really sort of stands out to me as being a problem that would affect my install so we'll close that and we'll, we'll go back onto CCAM and we'll click apply and there we go so we need this another primary mod and it's called community resource pack now basically what this does it adds resources in certain sort of resources such as things that you'd mine both in the atmosphere extract from the atmosphere and also mine up the ground we have background resources version because this needs to run in the background so the primary mod we have the community resource pack and background resources so I'm going to click apply and it wants me to install KSB AV. I'm going to resist installing KSB. Basically, AVC is automatic version checker. And basically, if the mod author hasn't updated the README file or the AVC file, it can be natty. It can start basically natty. It can be a, bit, a little bit annoying. It's, it's not really annoying all that much, but it, c it could be to some people, I suppose. So I want to continue going to grab all of that so that is basically it for so you can like I say always check to make sure that something's actually there and actually compiled it's not having any problems that is just in so you can to install it so you can only install it automatically itself if you click on it but it won't tell you if there's a problem with it. Only you can do that, either by running the game and finding there's a problem, or going and checking. Obviously some people have problems with every mod out there because they're doing something wrong themselves. A lot of times that is basically it's their mistake. I'm not blaming them if you're one of those people, but ultimately the vast majority of mods out there do run pretty much as they should pretty much most the posts and the forms and also on the github repositories where it says issues I've, my experience myself the vast majority of the problems that they're having are something they've done themselves they've installed it incorrectly to the wrong folder or they've got another modification at the very extreme cases another mod could be interfering and because other people haven't got the same mods installed they don't actually had, uh, sort of experience that same problem. So basically, that's it. That's TAC LS for you. TAC Life Support. Now I'm going to uninstall this for the set for part two. I'm going to manually install TAC Life Support and we'll show you exactly where to put it. So, what I said, what I basically I said, I would show you exactly what I meant by CCAN so actually listing suggested mods. A really good example of that is probably Space Y Heavy Lifters by Necrobones. And hopefully it is actually, there we go, we have Space X Launch, Space Y Expanded, Space Y Heavy Lifters. Now Space Y Heavy Lifters gives you exactly what it says on the tin. It gives you heavy lifting engines, SRBs, massive SRBs. So unless you're using tweak skill, you're going to need this. And if you want to use tweak skill. Now tweak skill, people who don't know, is basically a mod for basically tweaking the scale of objects. Certain mods do not like it though. 
Rill Fields hates it because it already modifies the mass of tanks and you can get negative mass and I can cause massive problems and cause all sorts of problems to your launcher just hanging there in midair with the engines running you release the clamps it just hangs there to it actually destroying itself just flying off at massive massive speed just breaking up because of chief forces so space for heavy lifters I won't probably tweak scale just yet tweak scale is one of the mods that I do like to use in the stock game I say stock game but the modded stock game if it's really some overhaul you have to be very careful how to use it I won't be covering that this is just about installing mods itself that is basically something I cannot fix I cannot fix the mass problems between tweak scale and mill fields I won't be using mill fields so that's not going to be a problem so space one heavy lifters take a look on the page as I always tell you to 1.2.2 and 1.3 now exactly what I said I've not heard of 1.2.9 so someone has obviously hit the wrong key when I was reporting an issue there earlier because no such thing as 1.2.9 as far as I know there's no such version 1.2.9 I may be incorrect might be something somewhere else you've got the they've got the game from I don't know but he basically hit base wire heavy lifters and here's an example of what I mean about the parts clustering engines large SRBs multiple engines on SRB I mean that is just look at that uh, dear me this is one of my favourite mods in fact they're all my favourite mods I'm not talking about so I've got there we go corporates with other mods tweak scale far near Near for people who don't know, I mean Ferrum Aer Ferrum Aerospace Research is, is Ferrum which as I, what I said it, it modifies the stock aerodynamics to be more realistic basically what all stock works is each, each part has its own drag cube which isn't realistic each part you add adds drag whereas FAR does it either way it, com it calculates drag on the shape of the overall craft so it's actually far more realistic but it is also you know pretty much it's get very complicated it's pretty difficult to get a hang of if you ever play with Rays and Overhaul in some time in the future some point in the future you, you want to try it out you won't be having far Nia is basically a cut down version far more simple version of far that's the easiest way I can describe it as so I've indicated lights, parts and echo bone, sweet, blah blah, to module, modular rocket system, MRS. Another fantastic mod. There's heavy lifters, parts pack, which is obviously here. That's what we got here. There's also expansion as well, which we saw listed in CCAN. So. Can't see any issues, to be perfectly honest. It's always best. This is effectively what you would do if you were downloading manually as well, but I'll cover that in part two, like I keep saying. A really strange bug. Okay, here's one interesting. Getting a really strange bug. All the textures are flickering like crazy. Possible overlapping textures that are fixed for this. So check out the troubleshooting in the first post. Usually this is a problem with module manager missing wrong version. Exactly what I said. Now, if you download mods manually, a lot of mods, I won't say all of them, but a lot of mods actually package together dependencies. So, you want to be downloading module manager yourself manually. Does that the same way as I did through CCAM? That's what you should be doing manually as well. But this is not part two, this is still part one. So, doesn't seem to be anything really sort of stopping you from actually trying out playing it for a little bit if you have any problems you remove it or you fix it yourself so how many game is crashing while loading in space why part after it does all the module manager stuff the part is on the loading bar is space while lifters parts decouplers 
S that's base Y S Y D coupler radio. So it's a radio D D coupler. I don't have the four nozzle SRB. I don't have any issues loading this game. It's not really a game you're loading, it's a mod, never mind. Because one point two when it got a problem so that's one point two point two. I'm not sure if you're willing to take part suggestions. So really, it's probably just from one with the exactly what you said, the incorrect module manager version, which can happen. But that's probably not. That's not the page I want. No. Nope. So, space wire heavy lifters. Now, space wire heavy lifters, if I'm not much mistaken, will suggest at least one other mod. It will suggest space wire expanded. So exactly what I mean by it will actually tell you about dependencies. And it also suggests mods to you as well, which is really helpful. So I'm going to click on Apply. Spray lifters 1.6, new module install. It's like by user. It's got no dependencies, which is usually a good sign. Apply. So it suggested indicator lights, but not space wire expanded. I would let it install indicator lights. Indicator lights basically, you can program them to basically display sort of flash red or something like that if there's a problem with that particular part and there's all sorts of things like that you can do with them. And there we go. I might suggest it's space white expanded. So I'm going to click yes. Go on then. Now, an, ex an optional expansion for space white heavy lifters that adds 7.5 meter parts among other enhancements so basically it adds even larger parts so it's actually a pretty decent sized mod it's 40 megabytes it's not the biggest mod but with MRS and Space Y and some of the other sort of tweaking mods gameplay enhancement mods such as cable construction time stage recovery to main but two, you can have a really good get playthrough. I mean, I mean, really good playthrough without any of the massive mods. If you prefer the launch section of the game rather than the sort of uh, sort of reenactments of historical launches, then these are the mods for you. If you like doing things like um, space shuttle launches and things like that, then a fantastic mod would be Fessy Blue Dog. There's Farza which have Apollo parts in them fantastic mods Faza and Blue Dog are absolutely incredible the detail on the models are just fantastic we need a pretty damn good system and obviously the Unity engine itself has a very it is actually limited as all engines are Unity is by far not the worst game engine in the world believe me it's not and the other one is SSTU or Shadow Space Technologies Unlimited, which has pre built models of space shuttles. It has two versions of the space shuttle one with engines and one without engines. So you can put your own engines on if you want to fit your own type of engines or whatever. You can do that with SSTU. It also has a clustering system. So you can do um, first stage like um, a Saturn V. So you, have, so you can have as many engines as you like. You can have it up to, I believe, with an expansion, it goes up to 30 plus engines on the first stage. So you can do a space y, uh, space X launcher with 12 or more clustered engines on the first stage. And obviously another previous mod that I also stated was stage recovery, also by Magico 13. Same as cable instruction time. That allows you to recover stages and recover some money as well. Currently, as far as I know, the last version I actually used didn't include the part itself. It only, only, uh, basically only refunded the part itself, the actual money. But it used to actually have a stock of parts that it could be reused. So let's say you have an FR, let's say you have four SRBs on a fair stage and four SRBs, and you recover two of them. The other two burn up for some reason or fail 
it would recover those. You put shoot, you put foot. Basically, you have to fit parachutes onto those SRBs, and when they're recovered, you can then reuse them again. And once they've been used so many times, it will alert you and say these have to be scrapped. Now, I don't know whether that actually is included anymore. I know there is a mod called Scrapyard. I don't know if that's by Magico 13. But that is also out there as well, which you can couple together with Kevlar Shooting Time, Stage Recovery. Personally, myself, I just. I just I'd rather it didn't sort of allow you to reuse them, just give you the money back. Because you're obviously reusing parts. It's a bit dodgy. I know the cables, and they're dodgy anyway. But uh, for your own sanity, I would sort of. I wouldn't use reuse parts. Obviously, you don't want to be using heat shields again, for obvious reasons. But any part at all, engines or anything else. Especially have another mod installed called Dang It. There's Dang It Continued. And it has a, another mod which was a bit, it was a separate modification at first called Entropy, which makes it basically it's a hardcore config setup for Dang It. Well, Dang It is a part failure mod. And it's nasty. If you, you can basically, uh, you can modify it to play hard mode or pretty easy mode but basically there are just a selection of mods that I've just shown you there's a ton of things as remote tech as well which is another mod which I would really prefer using there's an absolute ton and there is tweak skill don't get it mixed up with tweak or everything different mod Tweak scale just basically tweaks the scale of things. It modifies the mass of parts as well, which is why rail fuels has a problem with it. But you're not going to be using rail fuels unless you're using rail, rail as a motor hull. So, there's all the USI mods here by Rover Dude. There's an absolute ton of mods that you can install. You can have a great game just by using CCAN to install your mods. But if you really need to, or really feel like doing it manually, there's your milk tech. That's been updated to 1.3. Your milk tech is obviously the infamous mod for communications where you actually have a lim range limit. And you also have blackouts. You can't just go ahead and just control a, a spacecraft from X amount of distance, you have speed of light distance limits, so it can take up to several minutes, even hours, to get a signal to a probe or any other sort of spacecraft where it's a lander, a probe, or even a rover on the planet surface, a robotic rover. So that's a very immersive mod, but it also increases the difficulty a lot. So if you're just starting on KSP I would not recommend using remote tech. The one thing I will say about remote tech is that it, it gives you a console in the top left hand corner of your screen and it allows you to control the spacecraft's attitude. It makes launches far more easier without actually using the cheaty sort of mech jeb. I found mech jeb pretty cheaty unless you're actually really Further out in the in the solar system, using remote tech, where you can't get a signal there for hours, which what you do need to have make job to to launch if it's a powered lander especially. But that's just basically an example. That space war heavy lifters and the expansion that suggested mod C can it suggested the mod also told you about dependencies earlier on with fire spitter. And you can basically have a fantastic mod with just a handful of these, a fantastic game I should say, with just a handful of these. There's Chatterer, now that is fantastic, that adds a lot of ambience to the game. There are a ton of mods, and I love every single one of them just about, but unfortunately you can't install in excess of six or 700 mods. It's impossible, you won't be able to run the game. There are contract mods. 
for people who get a bit bored with the stock contracts tourism plus remote tech obviously that's coupled with remote tech the mod field research obviously that's for BDU armory I'm not even going to touch that but BDU armory is listed here I believe it should be uh, based on stations and there's contract configure you need contract basically contract configurator is the easiest way to actually configure install and configure contract packs crew portraits crew light craft history okay so I think that's about it there's dang it and date continued you can basically install this follow my tutorial and install Seacan and have a little browse through all of these fantastic mod cryogenic engines oh Nertier, there's updated cryogenic engines fantastic I'm sorry I'm getting lost engineering tech tree, different tech tree mods as well there's engineering tech tree, engineering tech tree is fantastic if you get bored with the, with the, with the stock tech tree I recommend engineering tech tree to anyone really good there's lots of others out there there's a SETI tech tree SETI and oh, there's just tons so I'm gonna leave it there I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you found it useful uh, coming up in part 2 is the manual installation of at least TAC LS I'm going to show you how to install TAC LS manually in part 2 that will hopefully be a little bit close and a bit, little bit sort of shorter than this part because I got a little bit carried away there but that's what KSP does to you you get carried away stop visual enhancements I'm still doing it again I'm doing it again right stop alright right, hope you found this useful if you did click like if you have a problem or a comment or a suggestion for some mod that you have having problems with leave a comment or message me directly I don't mind messages message me directly if you want to that's fine I don't mind that just try and be as concise as possible and that you send, possibly send me the link for the mod that you're trying to install and you're having problems with but if you're having problems with the mod contact the mod author themselves on the page themselves directly first before you try anything else nine times out of ten they can they can they will actually help you I'll be very surprised if they won't help you if they, if or if it can possibly fix what you're having a problem with they will try to do it or somebody out there will try and fix it for you if it is sort of a problem with installing it or using it then yeah fine if you feel like you can message me if you think I can help then yeah go ahead great I'll try and help I will definitely try to help so it's in a part one hope you enjoyed it hope it's useful click like and please subscribe if you want to be updated on any more tutorials that I'm going to be doing this is just the first part the second part as I said is going to be manual and show how to mod the files yourself as well and also how to create a flag that is really good so you can have your own flag on the side of your own rockets that is brilliant so Thank you very much. And I hope to join you. Hope you'll join me for part two. So this is the end of part one. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.